Weber actor, director? Is it more like you like to focus more on your um, directing or acting, or for you it comes from the same place? Um, when you think of yourself as an artist right now? I think right now, like, um, I'm, I'm most interested in making my own films. Um, but I'm in my films, you know? And yeah. so I, I, I love acting. I love um, the journey that I've been on as an actor. And, and I love creating um, stories that I can really um, inhabit mm -hmm. uh, roles in a way that isn't necessarily normal mm -hmm. um, or traditional. So they keep, you know, acting and direct, it keeps me in a nice little loop, appreciating mm -hmm. both things. And uh, I mean, your, your latest film, The Place of No Words, is in a way a departure or an evolution of your of what your your style have been so far. Um, so how is that how is that the evolutionary point of your method? Mm -hmm. Because I haven't seen the film yet, but mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it seems like quite a there's quite a bit of distance between that and and the the fundamentals of what you've always believed in as, yeah. a, as a way of expression. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. I think maybe because in some ways the fantasy elements or things like that, yeah. but um, the film itself is actually uh, really grounded in uh, this thing that I've been calling reality cinema. Um, really, there's like a trilogy of films that I've been working on. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the last one, you know, number three in the trilogy mm -hmm. of... Uh, these reality cinema films. Um, and so my process is uh, very similar to the way in which I made The End of Love um, and Flesh and Blood with you know, using real life mm -hmm. relationships and real life dynamics. Um, but yeah, there's... You're incorporating new stuff with this one. Yeah, yeah, the use of um, some you know, classic nods to uh, you know, films like The Labyrinth, all the Henson stuff. I mean, Henson Company mm -hmm. ended up working on the film um, with our grumblers, with the, these creatures that are in the film. So there, you know, there's these big fantastical yeah. elements, but it's interesting. It's still grounded in this very realistic way. It's mm -hmm. its own kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. not like a recreation of some uh -huh. adventure movie. It, it feels, it's different. Yeah. yeah, and um, I mean, for you in general, it seems that uh, the ideas of fatherhood and also of activism have always played a role. Mm -hmm. um, and in this film, particularly, the point of view of, of the child uh, is that some that's quite a lot to take on from that point of view about the story of this father. Mm -hmm. um, how? For you, um, the notion of giving a voice to characters that wouldn't normally have it or, 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 or have been negated one, um, how, how do you work with that? How do you try to yeah. do that? Yeah, I, I, um, I'm really interested in vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think um, there's such beauty when, in vulnerability. When people are vulnerable, just really resonates with me, you know, because um, it's it shows when you're willing to be vulnerable, it shows kind of a bit more of the messy, complicated, paradoxical mm. world that we all live in, in a way. And I feel, for me right now with my work, um, a sense of responsibility to make things that honor the human condition and, and make us all feel a bit more connected mm -hmm. in some ways. And so working with my children, their, their innocence and um, their ability to just be present and open and be themselves is a beautiful thing, you know, um, being able to harness their real emotions and the way in which they look at the world and and charge that up with a cinematic language mm -hmm. um, 
has created some really, um, you know, films that I feel really, really good about. And being here with them, the interaction afterwards with the audiences has been really amazing, man. You know, really amazing. Has it has been going well at the Q and A's? Yeah, it's been incredible. You know, some of these. Um, How many of them have you done? Oh gosh, I do. Um, well, there's back-to-back -back screenings every day, and then today they're playing three of my movies. Wow. Off. Yeah. So you do them all? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right after this, I'm yeah, going to do a Q and A. It's such a particular experience because normally, even if you are at a festival for a few days, there's only limited screening, so you do it maybe a couple of times. I know. This today's the only, today's the only day that I'm not. I haven't sat in. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. In on the screening. I will with the, the later films today, but I've been sitting and watching all of them really? because it's really interesting for me to like to be here with a retrospective. I I haven't seen my first film in nearly ten years, really? so to Never. sit with it in a uh, on watch it on a big screen in a full house of people was amazing, and wow. then to follow that up with my latest film, you know, and watch my work in that context, yeah. I'm learning, you know, it's an opportunity to kind of learn even a bit more about myself and my tendencies and sure, wow. really look at them from a, an interesting vantage point, you know. I would have thought that because of the um, common ground, the, the sort of, um, there's, a, there's a, a, a true line in technique and, and style that you would have maybe revisit them with your collaborators at some point, but maybe, hey, especially the first one, maybe the first couple of films. It's been, yeah, it's yeah. been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. The first, yeah, the first one, it's, um, it's been a while. The other ones I've seen okay. more, but my first film in particular, mm. it's been, a, it's been <laughs> quite some time. And especially you know, on a big screen, yeah, you know, that's, 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 the, that's the most uh, exciting aspect of this. Yeah. And to be given such a rare platform, a rare opportunity to show all your films in a theater, you know, the theatrical experience is, has been under attack and it's changing and it's not as uh, frequent or often that you get to, as a filmmaker, play your mm -hmm. films in theaters with sure. people, you know. And um, so you've, you've fostered a, um, an atmosphere of collaboration with people. Um, especially talking about uh, art, um, actors, uh, there's some that you've collaborated with in your films, in, in their films, um, like Michael Cera. Mm -hmm. um, how does this this sort of inter inter exchange? How does that work? Um, does it come from a natural? There's a convergence that after a while it just happens, or is it like you go to a person like I've got this work with me on this, yeah. or is it more of a shared... Um, well, I, you know, all my projects, I... I, um, I family write, aside, because of course... Yeah, you know, yeah. Your yeah, wife but, and... Uh, well, 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 with, in, in um, The End of Love, with, with folks like Michael and Aubrey Plaza, you know, showing up, they're friends, mm -hmm. and so... Um, and they, they knew and they know that the work that I was... The, the film that I was attempting to make was trying to show uh, a heightened, different side of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I was getting them to play versions of themselves. And because they're so talented, that's really all you need to say. And you know, we have the, the, the clearly, here's what the setup is. Um, and you, Michael, you're having a party, you're inviting me to a party. And we go through those things. Um, but all that stuff with Michael in particular was entirely improv, you know, all the, the exchange and the dialogue and the things that happen, mm -hmm. um, but but tonally and the emotional beats that I needed to hit for the structure of the film were all there. But how we're going to get there was uh, always going to be up to the moment, um, mm -hmm. and okay. and you can only really do that with people who are you know as talented as them and and also believe in your process and are, are willing to to go on this adventure. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the balance, like for example, like a Casavetes uh, type of career, like if you put it in, if you could put that in a modern, uh, in a contemporary um, setting, that would, it would resemble probably your uh, trajectory as an artist, as a, 
um, director, actor, uh, creator of the film in this um, atmosphere with, with other people. Um, how do you, the balance of you servicing the film um, as a, your film as a director, as an actor, how do you work that out? How is it? How does it feel for you? Just being your own tool. Yeah, it feels amazing, man. It's the best. It's the best feeling to be able to um, have a vision and um, have a story that you want to tell, and to have you know I have a small group of people that I work with. We don't. It's very untraditional. I have my own way of making movies, you know, and a lot of it is about eliminating all of the, um, a lot of the traditional things like trailers and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the normal protocol. Yeah, I, um, or keeping people off a set and then just inviting the actors right before you shoot the scene or things like that. Like I'm, I shoot in a lot of real locations, real people's homes. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're always together with the people? Yeah, we're together and I want, I want people to feel it, you know. I want I want it to feel real, and uh, and and because I think um, by also being in my films, in some ways it's easier to direct yeah. because I'm I'm there and I'm able to. If we're a, you're my scene partner, I'm you know that I'm aware of what we need to be doing, mm -hmm. you know, and so. Um, so you've never been curious about trying to see how a distance would be like, with, like as a director? I, did, I, did, I feel there. like I did with my first movie, you know, and and and, uh, and now I figured out a way where I did a bit of both, you mm -hmm. know, um, including you know uh, the next project that I'm working on right now finished writing like there's and with the place of no words too like I'm deeply enmeshed in it but mm -hmm. I also have many many moments of just reviewing what we've shot and composing shots and thinking about things in that way mm -hmm. you know so it's not just like relentlessly like I'm not just worried about the scene as an actor mm -hmm. um, they're all my acting now like it's funny when I go and try to work on other people's films. Um, it's all it's a little bit more challenging for me now because I'm okay with looking at playback. Like I can look at myself. I'm not an actor who's like, oh, that's what I look like, or you know. I actually I I like to to see the shots. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it helps me give a performance now. Okay. And sometimes for other you know they other directors and things are like. You gotta, they don't want the actor to, you know, and I understand that, I get that, but, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's an interesting spot to be in. And in terms of the emotional space when you're acting on other projects, because, I mean, at this point you build all of this for yourself in which you're kind of spoiled for uh, yeah. sort of just a, an emotional um, connection yeah. with everybody. So when you go and just act and you show up on set, does that make it now a bit difficult to? It's it, it. Thankfully, it hasn't been too difficult because now what I do is is I just I know fully one hundred percent just how much mm -hmm. goes into making a film. And when I first started out, just acting like a typical actor, a young actor, um, I had uh, the idea that it was. It all about me in some way, <laughs> you know, and 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 so now having a, a, a total appreciation for everyone's roles on the film set and and the, and the collaborative effort that it is, mm -hmm. um, I can show up as an actor now, and I'm wearing a bunch of different hats as well in my mind, and I can know how to help out, and so much of. Um, Film sets are just about the energy in the room on the day. Mm -hmm. and you just got to keep the energy good, you know. Um, and actors, because you're in front of the camera and your your scene work is about tapping in with another person and finding 
your energy with each other and to make the scene work, you are in so many ways responsible for the energy on set. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to greatly influence the way people feel around you mm -hmm. in uh, on the day. And um, so when things get, I can feel maybe you're getting a little stressed, people are getting stressed out because we're running out of time. Opportunity to step in and be extra gracious and mindful and mm -hmm. helpful, you know, to the process. Okay. And in terms of plays, because as we were saying before, like there's a, there's a kind of a grounded element in like shooting um, the, the locations that you choose, but like you're based in LA. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would imagine you're, you feel part of, of the LA um, uh, landscape, mm -hmm. the community. How does that inform uh, the work for you? And how do you feel regarding like a bit, a little bit bigger than the the specific place, and in general in the city? You, yeah, yeah. I, I love, I love, I love living in Los Angeles. I live in Australia too, um, and so I have, and we travel a lot. Uh, and do you? Oh, uh, I'm. I last year I lived in Australia a bit more than I did oh, okay. in Los Angeles. Um, but we we travel so much, me and my family. Mm -hmm. um, and so and I'm incredibly grateful for that. Currently, right now in my life, like the world feels this big. It feels so small to me right now. Cause I've, and I'm so grateful that I've had the opportunity to go so many places and not just go, but like live there, mm -hmm. uh, make work there. So um, as a director, you're not, that's not your horizon. Like, you know, some, some directors, are so closely associated with a city yeah. that they shoot in. No, you know, and I, I shot a couple of films in Philadelphia because I wanted to show, from, yeah. you know, um, what it was like to, to grow up in the community that I grew up in mm -hmm. um, and really honor that. So my, I think the way that I approach it, also Los Angeles or anywhere, mm -hmm. um, you know, I draw inspiration from wherever I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, and I've and I've drawn a lot of inspiration from living in, in California and Los Angeles, and it just so happens to be, you know, it's a really concentrated mm -hmm. town with a, a, a tremendous amount of artists who are incredibly great at what they do, mm -hmm. um, and that's inspiring as well too, you know. Okay, and um, you I know that you've you work now with the same people. For a while, in terms of like your your collaborators, your yeah. DPs, your your the editors, um, like for example with your DP, which I think you've done all of your films. Yeah, with, all of them. Yeah. I'm curious, like, what's the relationship now, even just outside of of your work together yeah. on, on the set, but just in general, uh, how yeah. how's the communion there? Um, oh, Patrice, my DP, is the best guy ever. <laughs> <laughs> I like. We have a really funny relationship. Um, he's French. We like make fun of each other. We mess around, but there's like such deep love and respect for each other. He's a dear friend, you know. And we've but been then at the same time, like you need that, and then uh, all of a sudden you you need to sort of step it up and become yeah, like, which is switch. great when you can have someone that's that you know five projects in, really six, because he shot a film that I starred in. Oh. So I got to know him first just as an actor working with him. And then we've gone on and shot five films together. We also shot some music videos together. We've done so much together that like we know Patrice, he knows when I'm pissed off or vice versa. And, and we care. We're deeply invested and we want to make something great. And there's no, you, we can't hurt each other's feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no nothing's out of bounds, nothing's not safe between us, mm -hmm. you know, to, there's no bullshit, which is great. You know, a lot of first time filmmakers, it's, it's hard when you're just getting a crew together and, mm -hmm. and, and this is your first go around, you know, because you're learning your language with each other. You're, and it's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. And um, sometimes people are nervous to speak up 
some people don't feel seen or validated or worthy and are not willing to take a risk or try something because they don't want to look stupid. Um, but when you're as deeply connected like him and I are, we, we don't care. There's no idea that's uh, not too, you know, too crazy or, or um, nothing that we can't or won't try. And um, we're not worried about how we look doing it, you know. And what are some, because maybe there's some other influential people in your career so far that you work with that maybe they're behind the scenes mm -hmm. in the tech departments that you feel don't get enough credits? Uh, um, well, my, my what, Sven, who's edited um, the majority of my films, like, it's amazing. He, he came to me with this idea, uh, like, hey man, I want to show people, I want to build a YouTube channel and show people about editing, you know, and wanted to use flesh and blood as part of it. And I was like, ooh, a little hesitant at first about letting people in. But I said, okay, let's do it. You mean why? So shooting while you're editing so he would shooting he, for the channel while we're editing while we was editing my film flesh and blood he created a youtube channel uh -huh. called this guy edits uh -huh. um to to let people into the process he now is huge i've met I've, fans of his here uh -huh. um because of his his youtube channel um is becoming like one of the most, you know, the, the most formative uh, YouTube like tutorials on how to edit and talking about editing. Um, and I think because people got to see a real, you know, a film come together and then go to South by and then what's happened after. And, mm -hmm. um, so he, I, it, it, it's great. You know, he's built a, a, a profile for himself in that way. Um, and it connected to you know some art that we made together. So I feel, and my, my producing partner Dustin is here. So I feel like, you know, the people that make the movies with me, they feel um, they're happy, mm -hmm. you know, and they feel seen and heard, and they know just how appreciated they are, um, and they love the work too, mm -hmm. you know. And to sit here with my friend Dustin, who helps makes the films with me, and and watch the films with people and their reactions afterwards. I mean, this is why we do what we do. It's really, it's, it's quite special, man. Okay. And what's, what um, has your experience with film festivals been uh, in terms of like submitting stuff, maybe sometimes yeah. you get accepted, sometimes you don't I've been, any. I've been so fortunate, man. I, I think that, you know, I've played, um, I've played, you know, I've, I've played every, the, I call it like the trifecta. Um, I've had a film that I've written and directed and starred in play the top three American film festivals, you know, Sundance, South by, and Tribeca. I've been in competition with a narrative feature that I've created, which is kind of amazing, man, mm -hmm. for me. Like, I'm like, you know, they, they've been, um, they're vital, they're instrumental in my career. Um, I've been to Sundance so much throughout my entire career um, and South by and and then these international festivals on the international side how has your experience been it's amazing you know like but how many how many times um, has a, that happened a bunch you know a lot like um, with the place of no words just that alone it's this little tour that we've gone on has been so amazing going to Munich uh, Gifoni in, in Italy, this youth-oriented festival, and we won. Um, and and now coming here, you know, um, to be showing a retrospective of my work in Poland is so cool. Yeah, you know, it's like so deeply meaningful. Um, I I kind of can't believe it, man. You know, <laughs> and um, for the future. What do you have on your radar, your horizon things? I'm making, I'm get, making my next movie next year. I 
want to say everything about it, but I can't because I'm still oh, finishing it, and I'm like, it's in that precious thing, but like, I'm... But let's say in terms of themes and... and I know I, like, not even like, I get so... <laughs> it's just, look at me, look at how I get, I want, I'm like, ah! I don't, and nobody knows right now. Nobody, not even my wife. No one knows what I've been up to, and... Uh, so you've been writing this? And yeah. Shoot next year? Yeah. And I'm just like, it's been really cool to be here and watch all of my work and, and, and really take it in and think like, okay, and see things. And, Cause you know, when you're, when it's your work and you watch it, all you generally see are all the shortcomings and all the things yeah. that you want to make better and all the things that you tried to do, but you failed on, and, you know, like so it's been great been great inspiration with the me conceptualizing mm -hmm. this next thing and gotta do a bit of inventory every now and then and yeah sort of see okay, and it's it, been it so I, that's why i'm even extra grateful not just for like the on paper accolade of playing a retrospective mm -hmm. or getting an award which is amazing mm -hmm. but the the reality of it is like it the to just be able to sit in a theater Mm -hmm. with an audience and watch what I've done is um, it's a dream come true man you know okay yeah thank you thank you hey this is Eric from myoncinema.com if you want to support us subscribe below for more reviews interviews film festival coverage from Sundance Cannes Toronto you want to check out these guys on this side